The 1920s is known for its energetic lifestyles where new cultures surfaced as people partied into the night. The time also filled with widespread racism where the KKK arose and African Americans were heavily discriminated against. In response, the Harlem Renaissance took place in which a cultural rebirth of the African American community occurred during the 1920s. The Harlem Renaissance started from the Great Migration, where many African Americans migrated from the South into New York. The Harlem Renaissance was a hopeful period for the African American community where optimism was high and art, music, and literature exploded. One leading figure in the Harlem Renaissance was James Weldon Johnson. James Weldon Johnson was really one of the catalysts of the Harlem Renaissance. His work defined this generation. It is important that people know who this man is and what he did to really appreciate the Harlem Renaissance. In essence, James Weldon Johnson's life represented the Harlem Renaissance. He was born on June 17, 1871 in Jacksonville, Florida. In his early life, it was evident that he wanted to pursue literature. He attended Clark Atlanta University at the very young age of 16 for his passion of English literature. James Walden Johnson was hired as a principal in a grammar school after earning his degree in 1894. While in his position, James founded the Daily American Newspaper. Looking to go into law, James was the first African American to pass the bar exam in Florida. Deciding to focus on literature, James wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing in the 1900s. Lift every voice and sing, till earth and heaven ring. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Lift every voice and sing was one of Johnson's first works in poetry, and arguably one of his most important works. The poem is about remembering how the African American community got to where they are and looking forward to the bright future that laid ahead. Lift Every Voice and Sing was really, was really symbolic of the Harlem Renaissance period. Having African American pride and being optimistic about the future that laid ahead was describes both the Harlem Renaissance period as well as Lift Every Voice and Sing. And when Johnson joined the NAACP as secretary later in his life, the NAACP realized how significant Johnson's poem was and later adopted it as the Negro National Anthem. James and his brother John moved to New York in participation in the Great Migration. They worked on songwriting, where they were quite successful on Broadway. In 1904, James participated in President Roosevelt's successful presidential campaign, and he was appointed to diplomatic positions in Venezuela and Nicaragua by the president himself in 1906. When he returned in 1914, Johnson continued to be a strong civil rights activist, and he became involved with the NAACP, where he had even become secretary in 1917. Johnson used his position to bring the issues of the time to surface, starting with lynching. In his new position as chief executive for the NAACP, James became an iconic figure for the Harlem Renaissance, creating many poems in his time. In 1922, he released the Book of American Negro Poetry, and in 1925, the Book of American Negro Spirituals. One of his more famous pieces was God's Trombones. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other, and God said, that's good. Having trust in God was a common theme throughout the Harlem Renaissance, which is exemplified in this quote. In 1930, Johnson decided to retire from the NAACP. Thank you for everything. This past decade has been such an honor. I think we really made a positive difference in our community, and I know we've made changes for the better. Uh, it pains me to say, but I'm deciding to step down from my positions in the NAACP, and I'm really grateful for all you guys giving me a chance to make a difference in our community. 
Johnson then decided to become a professor at New York University in 1934. While driving with his wife, a train hit the car, killing James Weldon Johnson in 1938 at the age of 67. James Weldon Johnson's lasting legacy has prevailed throughout generations. 